Hi everyone, it's Chris Acton with Acton Creative. This is a hand-woven experience, episode three. So in the first two episodes, we've been talking about yarn. And I thought today I would share with you pretty much my favorite yarn and talk about why it's such a big deal. My favorite is a cotton, not surprisingly. I like a carpet warp or rug warp. There's a company called Maysville that's made it for over 100 years. It is considered an 8-4 cotton, which if you missed it, in episode two, I talked about the numbers and what they mean. But in this case, it means that we've got four plies. And if you can see, I've got multiple plies of yarn there. So it has a very tight twist to it. This is also considered an unmercerized cotton, which means it hasn't gone through that mercerizing process. So it has more of a matte finish to it versus a shiny kind of finish. This is actually a brand new cone from my favorite people over at Three Moons Fiberworks, our local weaving store. Shout out to Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. Um, it's also not very expensive. You can get, this is a half pound tube, which is eight ounces for somewhere between seven and $9. Also comes in like 60 plus colors, a lot of colors, which is part of the reason I really love it. So I was introduced to Carpet Warp, gosh, 10 years ago, 11 years ago probably. And at the time I was staying with my friends, Terry and Gary, who were helping me transition from my corporate world uh, to being an artist full time. And I wanted to do a special thank you for them. So I found this project and it was for a set of placemats and it called for Carpet Warp. And uh, in this case, it used carpet warp in both the warp, which are the yarns under tension, and the weft, which are the yarns in the shuttle. And I think it's a waffle weave pattern, if I remember correctly. And I just loved working with it and how it turned out. It has a really, really soft hand to it, which means that it feels really soft and squishy when it's all finished. Um, so that kind of started my uh, love affair with uh, carpet warp and now what that's kind of transformed into is that I use carpet warp almost exclusively for all my warps and my projects um, I've got a couple examples I'll show for you here this is um, just a little fingertip towel that I made uh, using carpet warp for both the warp and the weft and in this case I set it or the set is we'll talk about that later in the next upcoming video uh, but the set is about 12 yarns per inch if I'm going to use it in a warp where I'm using um, a recycled material or some other kind of yarn that I really want to show up I'll set it a little wider apart so like eight ends per inch this is an example here it's one of my clutches and the yarns are running this way this is the warp here and these are the weft this is recycled neckties in this case going the other direction so I set a little farther apart so you can see more of the recycled strips that are going back and forth so over the years in my experience working with carpet warp there are a couple things that you have to keep in mind first of all not great for fringe. If you uh, are really interested in doing a set of scarves that has the nice uh, twisted fringe or just the long fringe, it's not great. It doesn't hold its shape very well. It tends to get real fuzzy, which is kind of the good news and the bad news because it gets fuzzy. It has a great, it's very soft, but that doesn't hold its shape very well. So not great for fringe. If you want to do fringe using carpet warp, I recommend doing um, a braid or a twist or something that will keep it together um, so that, that just the very end will be loose. Also, uh, uh, shrinkage. Boy, carpet warp can shrink, let me tell you. I plan for anything that I'm going to wash, like towels, I plan for at least 10%. And it depends on the project. In some cases, if I'm weaving a tighter pattern, uh, it might not shrink as much. It all kind of varies. And we'll Eventually, we'll talk about shrinkage and how to handle that. But um, plan for plan for more shrinkage than you would other types of cotton. Also, in some cases, um, you have to consider bleed it, bleeding. The colors will bleed. I don't know if you've heard that phrase before, but that basically means when the dye from one yarn um, bleed well bleeds is the word it uh it basically gets into the other one so if you put a red yarn next to a white yarn there's a chance that the red would kind of eke over into the white territory and it'll look kind of pink now 
uh, um, the carpet warp has gotten so much better. It doesn't do that nearly as much now. Uh, but just to CYA, I recommend using a Shout color catcher. Have you seen these? They're these great kind of fibrous sheets that you put in your washing machine and it will catch all the loose dye that's floating around in there. So that really helps keep your whites white. So, um, so the bleeding isn't a huge deal, but something to be aware of and to take precautions against it. Uh, and the last thing is that just doesn't have a shine to it. So if you like your yarn to have a little sparkle to it, a little, um, you know, a little satiny kind of look, this isn't the one for you. It's really because it has kind of a matte finish. Uh, it has kind of an earthier kind of look overall. So, uh, so that, my friends, is my case for why to use uh, Maysville Carpet Warp or Rug Warp. You could call it either one. It's a great fiber. If you haven't tried it yet, I recommend it. So hopefully you got something out of this video today. Um, I would love it if you would like, comment, or share, and let me know if you have any questions or any kind of feedback. I'm all ears. If you want to be the first to know when there's more videos coming up, uh, feel free to subscribe. I would love to uh, to have a, build a community here and have more folks in the um, handwoven experience group. Anyways, so I hope you have a fabulous week and I'll talk to you soon. Happy weaving.